Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TC Global's webinar on the perfect landing, redefining career planning. Before we begin, some quick pointers. We know this session will raise a lot of questions, so please feel free to ask any questions that you might have through the question panel at any time during this presentation. It will be on the right hand corner or at the center of your screen, depending on your device. We also have some polls for you today. All you will need to do is select on the screen the answer that is best suited to you. Our presenter, Ron, will tell you when the poll is about to begin. With that being said, I'd like to introduce to you today's panel uh, before I introduce our presenter. We have a very, very experienced panel today. We've got a panel. Can I please ask you to switch on your cameras for a minute? Thank you. Uh, we've got uh, Bindu Chopra, uh, Krishna Niyogi, and Kalpana Zuchi from our international relations team. Uh, their combined experience will give us insights and help you decide um, on what future you can take and what career choices and paths you can take from, a, from an education perspective. We've got Romila and Rajesh from our learning and development team uh, who are also here to help guide us. Uh, guide you and answer any questions that you might have uh, in relation to theme and career planning as well. I'd love now, uh, panel, you can go off. I'd love to introduce you now to our speaker, Ron McClucky. Uh, Ron is an international management consultant, psychologist, and one of 12 certified master action learning coaches globally. His career includes university lecturing. Entrepreneurship and, leadership, uh, entrepreneurship and corporate leadership. Ron is a happy and truly global citizen, having lived, worked in South Africa, Middle East, New Zealand, and now here in India. Consulting and speaking engagements have taken him to numerous other countries as well. Ron's passion and purpose is to help people be successful in their careers and challenge them to be happy 24 seven. So with that being said, Thank you very much for the uh, kind words, Rohini. Uh, to the panel members, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Uh, to the audience, absolutely wonderful to uh, to have you all on board. Thank you for making the time, and we will endeavour to uh, make this a really uh, special and meaningful session for you. Before I actually start off with the webinar itself. I'd like to share with you a story that happens to me very frequently. I do a lot of coaching of senior executives. These are presidents, vice presidents, and very senior people at the sort of pinnacle of their career. And one of the questions that I ask them um, very regularly is how happy are you now? And when I started this, my expectation was that these people would say, you know, being at the peak of their career, you know, they're really happy. I was absolutely shocked, uh, shattered, when I got the response that, you know, on a scale of one to 10, typically their happiness level is at about a three to four, which is incredibly low. And then when I asked them why, the response I so often get is, the career I'm in is not what I'm passionate about. It's what my parents or other people said um, I needed to do you know, when, I, when I was leaving school. So they've spent you know, many years, 10, 20, 30 years in careers that they're not really excited about and passionate about. That's one of the reasons that I'm actually very passionate about the career planning for young people. And uh, hopefully this session will prove very valuable for you. So, who is TC Global and how can we help you? You know, TC Global has uh, been around since 1995. You know, their passion and purpose really was shaping lives and careers. And, you know, since we started, we've had over 2.5 million you know, student interactions. Uh, we currently have 
you know, university partnerships on over four continents, more than 700 international university partners. And typically we see or interact with around 350 students each year. The different things we do, uh, firstly, there's global education. That is about helping young people define their interests, their passions, their career interests, and also help them choose careers and also identify and choose the, the courses, universities and careers uh, that match their aspirations. And with that, we do, we support them completely in the whole you know, education journey. Secondly, we have the global learning operation. So global learning is about is supporting our students with a lot of the English language, uh, verbal reasoning, and other entry requirements for you know, various universities. You've all heard of the GMAT, the SATs, the TOEFL. So we have very um, innovative and effective you know, coaching for students in that space. We also have a very strong psychometrics uh, division, which I'll be talking more about today, and other global learning um, offerings. The global investments is really um, helping Indian families and students uh, with overseas investments that will help them qualify what started off um, being for green cards in the US. And we are now helping um, parents and students emigrate to a range of countries. The reason we do this is that most parents uh, are happy to make the investments you know, for international citizenship, primarily for their, uh, for their youngsters. And finally, we have Global Workspace, and this is where we help international universities establish their presence in India. So that's just a little bit about TC Global. So let's go on to today's session. So I've split today's session into three sections. The first is what are the three sacred rules of career planning? I've worked with many students in career planning and I've found these rules really important. Secondly, we'll be looking at um, a career planning roadmap. So what this will help you do is just understand a very robust process that you can go through in determining your, your future career. And then lastly, we'll be talking about um, psychometrics and how psychometrics can uh, play a very, very powerful role in career planning and decision making. Specifically, I'll be talking about the about CMAP, Career Motivation Analysis um, Profile. So those are three things that I'll be, um, I'll be covering. So if we could um, go on to poll one, uh, you'll find the questions um, there that uh, Rohini will shortly uh, indicate. And all you have to do is to click on the bullet point uh, of the statement that you agree with most. So if you'd like to do that, uh, Rohini, thank you. And we'll give you probably a minute or so to, uh, to decide on that. Uh, our poll one question is we'd like to know you better so that uh, Ron can be able, uh, is able to give you the advice that you're actually here to get. One is, are you a student of uh, grade nine or 10? Or are you a student of grade 11 or 12? Are you a parent? Uh, are you an undergrad student? Or are you a teacher or a, stu uh, a student counselor at a particular school? Uh, Ron, uh, just to give you a heads up, we've got 71% uh, percent of uh, our attendees that have voted. We have about 24% that are 8th uh, eight and nine graders. We've got about 71% that are 11th and 12th. Uh, we have 2% that are undergrads and 2% that are teachers and counselors. Um, I'm just going to share that as well with, uh, with you so you can see it on your screens. Um, Again, it's it's a really nice cross section for you to talk to today, Ron. You've got seventy one percent 
11th and 12th and 24% um, 9th and 10th graders. Okay, wonderful. Um, well, thank you very much. So it looks like um, we have very good representation from the year 11 and 12. So a great time to be thinking about your future career. So thank you for that information. Uh, so let's move on from there. So what are these three sacred rules of career planning um, that I've been talking about? So number one is, uh, oh, sorry. Number one is to please you know, focus on your strengths and your passions. I get probably at least, I don't know, half a dozen requests um, every week where people say to me, Ron, can you tell me what my weaknesses are so I can fix them? Yeah, that is a very erroneous way of looking at things. You know, we all have wonderful strengths. And what I'd encourage you to do is to plan your career based on your strengths, things that you are really good at, that you enjoy, that you're passionate about. So please don't fall into the trap of saying, Oh my God, this is a weakness. How do I fix it? So yeah, that's not what career planning is about. It's about focusing on your strengths. So let's have a look at the second one. It's your life. It's your decision. I appreciate this will be very difficult uh, for some students, especially where we have a lot of parental pressure that parents believe, you know, you need to be a doctor or an engineer or, uh, you know, whatever they fancy. And, you yeah, know, this is one of the massive, massive mistakes that youngsters will make is, you know, not following their own strengths, their own passions in deciding on their career. You know, deciding on careers to, you know, make parents or other family members happy. It's a bad, bad way of doing it. I have two sons that have been very, very successful. And you know, when they were in year 12 and uh, just after they'd finished, they had many options. And they said to me, you know, Dad, what, you know, what should we do? Tell us what we should do. And I said to them, you guys need to decide for yourselves what you want to do. I will help you with all the information, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you need to decide. And today, many years later, they are very grateful that I made them you know, make their own decisions. They're very happy with that. The third rule is we don't know what we don't know right now. So we need to do a lot of research. Folks, a lot of people or young people fall into the trap that they hear about one you know, potentially very attractive job or career and decide, well, right, that's what I'm going to go for without doing adequate research, finding out about all the other wonderful, fantastic options that are out there. So they miss out on a number of options because they haven't actually addressed the problem of we don't know what we don't know. We need to find out a heck of a lot more. So research is very important. So let's have a look at the career planning journey. What all does it involve? The first and most critical step is knowing yourself, and we'll cover each of these in more detail. The second one is having a look at careers of the future. Yeah, you know, this is so important because the world around us is changing incredibly fast. And you need to make sure that you are making career decisions that will serve you well in the future and help you achieve your future aspirations, not choose maybe jobs or careers that right now yeah, are in vogue, but it will also be in vogue in future. I'll also spend a little bit of time looking at skills of the future. So yeah, it's great if you have the right technical qualifications, yeah, university qualifications for a particular career or job. Success is not just about the qualification. And what you'll find is that employers require a broad range of other non-technical skills. And we'll talk about those also. I'll talk about how you can identify your greatest opportunities 
And uh, I'm actually very envious uh, of you folks that are, you know, sort of looking at starting out your careers now. I mean, it's a wonderful world out there. It's a fantastically interesting, exciting world that you're preparing yourself for. I'll also be sharing with you maybe something that you haven't thought about adequately before, and that is brand you. What is your brand? What is your personal brand? We'll talk more about that. We'll go into actual decision time when you need to make the decisions about what you're going to do. And finally, about how you make all of this happen. So those are the um, you know, the steps in that sort of career map, if I can put it that way. So let's move on. You know, we are all wonderful human beings, very different human beings. We have different interests, different passions, and God made us all different, and thank heavens he did, or she did. So in terms of knowing yourself, what are the things that we need to look at? Firstly, what are your interests in life? Yeah, is there an art, adventure, travel, technology, photography, um, walking, hiking, um, yeah, dancing, going to movies, whatever it may be. It's critical that you really know what, what your interests are. Yes, they may change as time goes on, but what are you truly interested in? Secondly, if you look at your personality, your personality will play a major role in your future success or failure, depending on the type of role that you choose. You know, are you naturally introvert, extrovert, social, um, you know, positive, optimistic, or, you know, how resilient are you? Um, how, how do you deal with failure? Um, you know, what are the, the motives that really drive you? It's critical that you understand those things well. And that's where psychometrics can play a very important role. Yeah, what are your skills or abilities or your talents? Yeah, are you, yeah, do you have great people skills? Are you very creative? Um, yeah, are you good at coding? Um, so what are those skills that you have? And yeah, then finally, what is your passion and purpose in life? Yeah, what are your aspirations? Inspirations, what have, you know, what's your motivation? What are the sort of major goals that you'd like to think about? And yeah, you know, it's fine if you're not a hundred percent clear on these things at the moment, but you really need to start um, you know, giving them some serious thought. Um, I was very, very fortunate and blessed early on in my life where I could define my life purpose as really helping people be successful and happy. And yeah, that purpose has served me well throughout my career and has resulted in, even at this stage of my life, I I'm, I'm absolutely love what I do and I'm passionate about it. So how can you get this information? What are the routes to know yourself? Firstly, self-reflection. You know, one of our most powerful sort of learning tools about ourselves is to reflect back um yeah who we are what we are what we like etc so self-reflection is very powerful you can then ask for feedback yeah from your parents from friends from teachers from other people who know you well yeah if you um if you ask you ask them how would you describe me as a person they'll give you some amazingly good uh feedback <laughs> the other really interesting one, uh, and I do this quite often, you know, if you observe the choices that you make regarding uh, you know, the people that you hang out with, um, you know, what are your leisure activities, how are you investing your time, that will also give you some very, very powerful um, clues. The next one, you know, analyze life's, ex life's experiences. Yeah, you've had many experiences in life, and this is where the reflection comes in. And you're know, seeing what are the things that you really enjoyed, the things that you're good at, that'll you know, give you a lot of information. And then finally, um, yeah, using psychometrics. For me, 
you know, when I was making uh, my career choices, psychometrics were hugely important. And you know, that is probably one of the most powerful ways of you know, getting tremendously good insight on yourself. So let's move on from there. What are the careers of the future? Uh, so if we could please have a look at poll two. Here are the questions that we've got. So I'm going to ask uh, Ruheni to please uh, pick up on this again, Ruheni. So the, in poll number two, we just want to quickly know what best describes your current status on career planning. You haven't given it any thought. You're not clear on what subjects to choose. I know some of the questions that are coming in are around that. Uh, picked my subjects, but now need to plan. I am clear on what I want to do or open to guidance and advice. Um, wow, it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice big mixed background of answers that we're getting. We've got only about 30, oh, 45% uh, of, of attendees that have voted, but we've got 16 of them that are unclear on what subjects to choose. Uh, we've got about 41% so far that have picked their subjects but need to plan. 21% are very clear on what they want to do. 15% are open to any advice uh, and guidance that we can give them. And five are, have still not given it very much thought. we we'll just give it a couple of more seconds, Ron, before we uh, before yeah. I hand it yeah. to you. Because, uh, guys, you. if you can, all of you can, uh, you know, pull in your selection, it will give uh, Ron an idea of where you guys are at and how to help you. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now. So just Rod, just to give uh, you and, and our panelists a quick idea of who we're talking to, we've got uh, very proactive students uh, that are open to advice, about 15% 15, 15 of them. 24% are very clear on what they want to do. 40% uh, have picked their subjects, but are now starting to uh, put a plan together and they need to plan. 17% are still unsure on what subjects they should choose for their future. And about 5% have not really thought about it very much. Back to you, Ron. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Folks, the point I would like to emphasize, quite often young people come under massive pressure to decide very, very early you know, what careers they want to follow. And you know, if you're still thinking about it, let's say you're still in, you know, you're in year 12, you're still thinking about it, you're not sure, that's absolutely fine. You know, take your time to make those decisions, to get all the information you need. Um, so you know, please do not rush into this, do not be pressurized into making decisions that you might regret later on. You know, the other folk uh, that are still looking at you know, what subjects to choose, um, you know, you've picked your subjects so you need to plan. Again, you know, just don't rush into those choices and please base those choices on you know, a very thorough knowledge of yourself because at the end of the day, your personality, your talent, your abilities, yeah, they must align very, very closely with your future career choices. So please bear that in mind. Okay, I'm going to move right on. Um, let's have a look at the mega trends that are happening. You know, mega trends are like you know, the next big thing that's happening in the world around us. And as we've said there, people who are able to identify mega trends are able you know, to reap huge benefits from it. So let's have a quick look at those mega trends. And I'll go into these in a little bit more detail. So firstly, the whole connectivity and convergence um, communications area, technology. Secondly, health and wellness. And you know, I think the, the current um, COVID-19 is, is an indication of you know, just how critical that is. Sustainability is you know, where the future lies as well. And finally, the biggie is artificial intelligence. So let's have a quick look at these in a bit more detail. Firstly, when we look at convergence and connect connectivity, 
Yeah, over 90% of the world's data was generated in 2018, yet only 1% was utilized for meaningful insights. So again, there's going to be massive focus on using this data. Did you know 5G could increase network capacity by 40 times compared with 4G? And you know, cyber attacks will be of the highest concern by 2030. Um, yeah, I'm actually, sorry, will be, cyber attacks will be of highest concern by 2030 and amongst the top 10 global risks. Wow. So what are we talking about here? Sorry, I just need to move, uh, sorry. I just need to move this uh, to somewhere else. So as we've already indicated, cyber security is going to be a massive area of the future. It already is. We've seen you know, in the last US elections, um, you know, how Russia was, is accused of manipulating the US elections, and cyber security is absolutely going to be huge. The Internet of Things, yeah, as we say, yeah, what did we do, BG, before Google? So again, uh, anything to do with the Internet, Absolutely. Data analytics, yeah, I mentioned when I started this, um, yeah, that most of the data we are generating at the moment is not being really used. And robotics is going to be a massive area uh, for the future. So let's move on from there. So let's, uh, sorry, I just need to move uh, something here. Yeah, there we go. The global digital health market size is expected to reach 509 billion US dollars by 2025. That is massive. So digital health. Um, yeah, non-communicable lifestyle diseases will be the key driver of mortality. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, remote patient monitoring. Yeah, we'll be able to assess somebody's health by simply um, yeah, having a look at a smartwatch. Uh, yeah, monitor blood pressure, heart rate, etc. Healthcare research and development. If you look at what's happening in the world around us right now, with a massive focus on um, yeah, a corona um, vaccine. Clinical decision support systems. Yeah, so again, just massive focus on health and wellness. So let's have a look at sustainability. With over 90% of waste being dumped or burned, solid waste management is a universal issue. The circular economy could unlock 4.5 trillion in growth according to Waste to Wealth from Accenture Strategy. Decarbonization is reducing and ultimately reducing carbon dioxide emissions. So let's have a look at this in more detail. Yeah, one of the critical um, career areas, and this is applicable to all careers, is around design thinking. Being able to you know, think ahead to design systems, processes, products you know, that will have optimal sustainability and minimal environmental impact. The whole area of alternative energy, um, solar energy, wind energy, um, yeah, just massive re research that's being done on this as well, and that's where the future lies. Again, in waste management, you know, we've all been reading about the horrendous uh, pollution of our oceans with plastic, and yeah, amazing technologies that we can do, we can use now to utilize waste far more productively than we ever have had than we ever have before. So finally, artificial intelligence, as I've said, yeah, this is the mother of all megatrends. Yeah, if you are getting into the world of artificial intelligence from whatever career stream you come, yeah, it is almost guaranteed to be a very solid uh, career for the future. Yeah, what are we, what all is involved there? It's deep learning, it's simulation modeling. Yeah, it's, it's machine translation, it's social network analysis, machine learning, you know, robotics, soft robotics, um, 
Yeah, so there's a, a number of, I mean, visualization, virtual personal assistance, natural language processing. Yeah, this is just such an exciting area to be moving into. And yeah, this is going to create, I guess, the next revolution in literally everything we do. And that's going to be the world of artificial intelligence. Okay, so let's move on from there. Um, so the emerging areas in, in global education at the moment, healthcare, technology, yeah, logistics and supply chain, this is also going to be an incredibly important part of the future. Yeah, if you look at the disruption in the world caused by COVID-19 and yeah, how the world is battling to get you know, basic protective equipment, yeah, how do we move um, how do we move goods across the world? How do we ensure you know, supply of essential goods and services? Hugely important. Folks, another one that is, you know, again, has a guaranteed future is the human sciences. You know, never before had we had such an incredible need to enhance our social interactions. If you look at what the digital world has done the digital world has made us almost emotional cripples that we've lost so much of our natural human interaction human warmth human interconnectedness and in times of crisis as we're going through at the moment you know that is what people really really crave i've done a lot of work with various organizations in do, in working on what we call high tech as well as high touch. So people will want sophisticated technology and they will also want undoubtedly a very strong human element. So that's yeah, in, the, in the humanities as well. The natural sciences, yeah, all the STEM careers, and we've discussed that big data analytics. Obviously research remains a critical area. So while we've discussed all the, you know, those technical areas, Let's just have a look at you know, what are some of the skills that you'd need uh, for the future. And as you go through this, you know, if you're in year nine, year 10, year 11, you know, this is the, absolutely the best time for you to be thinking about developing these skills. Because if you wait until you know, you're an undergrad, or, you know, you're coming out of graduation, it's going to be too late. The skills we're talking about now, you need to be focused on developing yeah, right now. So let's have a look at them. Firstly, let's just have a look at our new ways of working. Yeah, if COVID-19 hadn't come along, these had speeded up these new ways of working, but they would have happened anyway. So firstly, we're looking from yeah, physical management, yeah, we were getting together in offices, etc., to to remote management. Yeah, the whole work from home, uh, virtual work. We're looking at moving from the area where people have, been, you know, have had niche expertise. They've worked in you know, relatively narrow areas. So th this is moving towards adaptability, you know, being able to adapt to many things, what you call fungibility. Um, and that's really about different capability areas being used for different purposes. So the whole adaptability bit. Yeah, moving away from the classic definition of employee when you you, know, you clock in, clock out, you know, you paid for your hands and not your not your not your minds, to really becoming business partners. I work with a lot of organizations, and you know, there's a very strong expectation, yeah, you know, for anybody coming into the world of work now to be true business partners and help organizations and businesses you know, be successful you know, in their growth, their profitability, their learning, their customer service, and so on. And finally, from a world of work, which typically you know, used to manage people by direction, by instructions, to really people having to become a heck of a lot more self-managed, um, uh, self-dependent. So this has huge applica um, implement implications, sorry. So firstly, 
Yeah, the skills to remain relevant. We have to be able to embrace change. Change like we've never seen before at a, yeah, at a pace we've never seen before. Creative thinking, this is where the design thinking comes in as well. You know, new and smart ways of doing things. You know, challenging the status quo. Um, you know, as one of our famous authors said, you know, what got you here ain't going to get you there. So creative thinking. Emotional intelligence. This is understanding and use of our own emotions as well as the understanding um, and use of um, other people's emotions, our impact on other people and you know, how they hang together. You've probably read a lot about emotional intelligence. Yeah, if you're not tech savvy, you're dead. <laughs> I don't need to say much more about that. Folks, the whole area of communication, you know, here we're talking in terms of written, we're talking in terms of you know, verbal communication, communication through technology, et cetera. In many of the employers I work with, this is a, a criticism that's quite often directed at many young people is they don't know how to communicate well. So, you know, the world is about communication. A growth mindset. A growth mindset is really about having a very positive view that we can learn, we can grow in almost an unlimited manner. It's a mindset of constant improvement, constant learning, constant evolution. It's a mindset, and I think the boy, best way to describe this is becoming the best possible versions of ourselves. That's what a growth mindset is about. And again, folks, without this, people are really going to battle. Active learning. Um, yeah, I've probably known for one quote that I use quite often. If you're not learning faster than change is happening, you're going backwards. But by active learning, I'm not referring only you know, to, to book learning, to formal courses, etc. cetera. Uh, what I'm referring, referring to here is a lot of self-directed learning through practical experience. Yeah, in, in rolling on programs, um, trying new experiences, doing new and exciting things, um, critical. Cultural intelligence. So what we mean by that is that we can understand and work with you know, diverse nationalities from across the world, because increasingly we are living in a global village. The whole question of leadership, leading others, and critically leading ourselves. You know, the days of companies looking after our, our careers and our learning, those days are gone forever. It's, it's, it's up to us. So let's move on from there. So what's your greatest opportunity? If you can make the right career decision that reflects your life's purpose, I'd invite you to think about, you know, so what did God put you here for? If you haven't defined it yet, that's fine. Just think about it. It will evolve. Yeah, you know, what talents do you have? We all have wonderful talents. Sometimes we don't recognize them. What are our career goals? Yeah, you know, think about those. The lifestyle choices we make or that we want and the, you know, the environment in which we live and we want to live. So if we get those things right, if we get them aligned, You know, with our future happiness and success, with the skills of the future, with the future world of work. So, you know, you have an absolutely wonderful opportunity, uh, an incredibly exciting opportunity to understand yourself, have a look at what's happening in the world out there, and align yourself to all those external opportunities that exist. The biggest mistake that many young people make is that they don't do this well. They don't understand themselves really well and align themselves with all those you know, wonderful opportunities in the future that fit their personality, their career interests, and so on. So let's move on from there. Brand you. Folks, we all have a personal brand. It's just the same as 
Yeah, most companies have a personal brand. If you think about Netflix, if you think about um, Apple, if you think about Microsoft, they all have a brand that when you think about them, um, you immediately associate them with certain attributes. Um, yeah, Apple on yeah, innovation. If you think about Nike honoring um, you know, high performing athletes. So whether we realize or not, we all have a personal brand. And if you're looking at being future in, sorry, if you're looking at being successful in the future, you need to understand what personal brand you have now and what personal brand you have in the future. So what do I mean by current personal brand? If you had to ask a lot of people that know you well, when you think of me, what attributes do you think about? And you know, ideally for our future, the sort of brand, well, let me go on to the next one. Yeah, your ideal personal brand. If we're looking at the future, you know, people that develop a brand image of you know, caring for others, being highly innovative, um, you know, being disciplined, having a high emotional intelligence, being passionate about what they do, respecting others. These are all really, really important. You know, one that I know the universities are looking for you know, in their selection of um, you know, students for um, you know, programs that are very difficult to get into, they're not just looking for how well you did you know, in your final um, school career, school marks. They are looking for your, you know, what, what is your personal brand? Have you been involved in extracurricular activities? Have you taken on leadership positions? Yeah, in your school, in your community. Yeah, what are your external interests? Um, yeah, um, in community service, in, um, I don't know, adventure stuff, whatever it may be. So your personal brand needs to be an exciting one. It needs to be a brand that is relevant to our rapidly changing technological future world. And the other thing that I've said here, folks, well, how will you create it? You know, a lot of thought needs to go into that. And the other critical thing is you need to start early. Yeah, as I was saying um, a little bit earlier on, it's no use waiting yeah, until you're in year 12 or you're putting in your, um, uh, you know, your application to universities um, and you know, you're writing your, your, your SOPs, uh, et cetera, statement of purpose. Yeah, it's too late then. You need to be working on all of these things very early. Yeah, like right now. <laughs> Decision time, putting it all together. So yeah, once you've you know yourself well, you've looked at all the opportunities out there. So yeah, now you really do need to make a decision. And remember, it's your decision. And yeah, it's wonderful to have reasonable clarity on your career plans. Yeah, it's fine if you have an option A and an option B. Um, yeah, we actually advise on that. But you need to have reasonable clarity on, you know, on where you want to go, what you want to do. So what are we talking about with putting it all together? So this is deciding on your career direction. What sort of study domain do you want to enter? Yeah, is it medicine? Is it engineering? Is it artificial intelligence? What is it? Then what are the specific you know, degrees or programs that you want to enroll in? Yeah, what universities are you looking at? What countries are you looking at? So yeah, again, there's a lot that goes into uh, making these decisions. And what I've said here is research, research, research. And yeah, an organization like TC Global has amazing resources through yeah, new platforms that are coming out, and through the, you know, the very knowledgeable and great service that our relationship managers can provide you with, you know, to really help you on this as well. It can be tricky and complex. That's why we suggest, you know, you, you do get a bit of help with it. Okay, so then, yeah, I said get professional help. Yeah, so making it all happen. So you've decided where you want to go, what you want to do. So now comes the critical stage. 
you've actually got to get your university applications done. And you know, we suggest you do this as early as possible. And you know, getting the university applications done is not as easy as it maybe looks at first glance. You know, to get the applications done, you also have to have your financial arrangements in place. If you're looking at overseas study, you know, what are the visa applications? You've got to have, no matter what university you're going to in India or abroad, you've got to have the correct documentation. And as I've said, you know, TC Global will support you, um, you know, through this journey. You know, I've covered this very quickly. Um, this is not my area of expertise. Yeah, this is the area of expertise of um, yeah, our, our global ed um, function within TC Global. We have wonderful capability yeah, to take all of this heartache um, away from you and help you through the process. I'm going to move on to the last section now. And um, this is using psychometrics for career planning. <laughs> I can uh, I can share with you a story. Um, in my last year at high school, and that goes back more years than I care to remember, I was probably sitting in the shoes that many of you folks are sitting in at the moment saying, yeah, what the heck do I do? And um, yeah, I went through a lot of psychometrics and what was actually quite surprising, uh, those psychometrics helped me enormously, you know, narrow down my um, career choices and, um, you know, what the psychometrics uh, indicated to me, I needed to go into the world of, um, of humanities and business. And they said, yeah, sort of an ideal role for me or an ideal area for me would be um, you know, as an industrial psychologist. And yeah, that's one of the, the qualifications that I ended up getting. And I've done many other things um, yeah, based on that as well. So yeah, I speak from personal experience here. Yeah, psychometrics can be massively powerful if, if they are used responsibly. And you know, that's where TC Global comes in. We are you know, very serious and very professional about what we do. So what is a psychometric assessment? You know, folks, I want to dispel a lot of the mystique and the, the woo-woo stuff that, you know, we're going into, you know, the depths of how your mind works and all that, you know, that's a lot of hooey. So what is a psychometric assessment? Very simply, it's an instrument designed to produce an objective, quantitative assessment of one or more psychological characteristics. For example, your career interests, your personality, your aptitude. You know, one of the huge challenges that we have when we're making a career decision is that we have very little objective data to work with. And this is where um, the psychometric assessment comes in really, really well. So I'd like to share with you just a little bit of background information about SciTech. Um, this is the global organization that um, TC Global works with. Uh, when I started um, my association with TC Global about four years ago, I looked at a lot of the psychometrics that were being used in the Indian market uh, you know, for vocational guidance. And some of the, a few of them were very good. And unfortunately, a lot of them were absolute rubbish. And at that stage, I um, arranged for TC Global to have the premier uh, partnership of Scitec International for India. So you know, as we've said there, Scitec is one of the world's leading developers of psychometric assessments. Um, you know, they're in five, over 35 countries, over 20 languages. Yeah, we've, yeah, over 5 million people have been assessed worldwide. CMAP, that's the Career Motivation and Analysis Profile Tool, which I'm going to go into more detail uh, about shortly. Um, it's exclusively represented in Asia um, by TC Global, what used to be the Choppers. And um, you know, I essentially head up, uh, I'm the managing partner for SciTech International in India as well. So um, yeah, I sort of look after that. So I'd like to share with you now 
a little bit of information about CMAP. Folks, you know, I can almost guarantee, I'm not almost, I can guarantee that this assessment will be of tremendous value in helping plan career decision making. And what it does, it firstly assesses your career interests in nine different dimensions. And these have been very, nine very well researched dimensions and I'll share, with, share them with you uh, shortly. You know, if you're not basing your career on the things that you are really and truly interested in, it's highly unlikely that you will be happy and successful you know, in that career if it doesn't reflect this. Secondly, um, personality. There's also a personality assessment. Your personality will play a major role in determining the type of work, the type of role that will suit you. Yeah, uh, maybe a, an example of this, I'll come down into it in more detail very shortly. You know, if um, you are somebody that has very strong intrinsic motivation, you know, you want to be motivated by the work itself versus extrinsic motivation. You don't care what work you want to do so long as you're really well paid for it. It's good that you know these things earlier on. Um, you know, are you by nature sort of introvert or extrovert? So, yeah, that is, that is, again, critically important. And finally, it assesses uh, your reasoning capability. So let's have a look at how this works. And what CMAP does, it generates a very, very um, powerful report. And I'll take a few examples of that report now. So in terms of the, the results of the reports, firstly, it looks at nine career interest themes. And these are based on a lot of research. So it's the artistic theme, scientific, logical, managerial, entrepreneurial, administrative, persuasive, practical, and nurturing. So let's take this a bit further. So what your report will, um, will look like is a diagram I'm looking at now. So firstly, what you see here down the left hand side of the report are all the different career interest areas. In the middle, you see your score and your themes with the highest scores uh, represent the type of work you will enjoy most. And yeah, at the moment, this one is logical. It might be a bit small for you to read, um, but your yeah, high scores are interested uh, in activities that involved uh, dealing with logic, computation, uh, and mathematics. And what you have on the right hand side is just a, a verbal description of that. So that is in the whole area of your career interest themes. Again, folks, I cannot stress strongly enough that it's vital, it's critical that you base your career on align your career with what your actual and real interests are. So let's move on to the, um, the personality assessment. So let me just get this. So the four dots indicate where the student's preference is to the right or the left hand side. So if we're looking at this first one, you know, introversion versus extroversion, this particular sample, the person had a you know, strong preference um, for introversion, they prefer to work alone, prefer their own company to that of others, you know, versus have a great need for social interaction, dislike being on their own. So I'd invite you to think, you know, that this type of information, you know, is, is tremendously valuable in knowing yourself, you know, when you're making um, career decisions. So let's have a look. So those are some of the you know, personality dimensions we look at. Emotionally changeable versus emotionally stable, conventional versus open to possibilities, suspicious versus trusting. Let's have a look at some of the others. Spontaneous versus conscientious. Intrinsically motivated versus extrinsically motivated. Doubting versus optimistic. And finally, cautious versus excitement. 
And the full dots indicate what motivates you, um, the right or the left side. Yeah, if we look down at the cautious versus optimistic one I'm referring to now, yeah, this person is, is yeah, strongly motivated um, through seeking new and exciting activities and enjoys a bit of risk taking. So again, I just want to stress that personality plays a major role in choosing your, um, yeah, your best opportunity careers and actual jobs. So let's move on to the third thing. Uh, sorry, the third part that it measures. Um, it measures three reasoning abilities, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, and abstract reasoning. And again, it's very good to have an objective assessment of these different types of reasoning. That you know, if you're going into sort of you know, the highly scientific um, areas, yeah, numerical reasoning would be very important. Um, and yeah, different career areas obviously have different reasoning uh, capability requirements. So it gives you a description of what, the, what we mean, the person's rating through dots and uh, through verbal description. So that's the reasoning capability side. Yeah, some careers do require a high level of um, uh, intellectual horsepower or ability. Yeah, others will require less. And yeah, if someone's uh, reasoning capability is not that great, yeah, it probably means that for yeah, programs and careers that require a very high level of thinking, it means they might yeah, battle a bit or yeah, be required to work a bit harder. Again, the more full dots, the higher the score. So folks, I'm heading towards the conclusion here. One of the, well, a critical thing that the um, report does, the CMAP report, it gives you a very good analysis of your three key career interest areas, the areas that are of highest interest to you. So yeah, this particular area was um, around scientific roles. So that would be, yeah, people would be attracted to jobs which involve scientific pursuits, including physics, chemistry, medicine, laboratory work. The career motivator is dis yeah, discovering new facts. Um, then there's a narrative here describing your personality and types of careers suited for your highest three career interests. So we look at your highest three career interests and you get one of these uh, charts for each of those. And as I've indicated at the bottom here, you get lists of careers that match your strongest career interests. So you actually get examples of jobs you know, that, uh, that would suit a person uh, with this career interest and this personality. If you look where I'm reporting now, for this particular um, profile, a biomedical engineer would have a 77% fit uh, with this person. What we also include in the report uh, is the opportunity for guided research. And what we encourage people to do, you know, the old old story, you know, if you don't write it down, it's not real. So we encourage people to complete the worksheets that we've got. And we also refer them to refer you to a uh, an online uh, portal called ONET, O N E T, and yeah, that will give you every possible bit of information you'd want about just about any career that you can find. Uh, yeah, if you say there, um, yeah. If you put in, right, you're interested in becoming a biomedical engineer, it would tell you what are the key tasks, activities, responsibilities, you know, what knowledge, resources, et cetera, you'd need, you know, what's the work environment, you know, what's it likely to pay, et cetera. So again, you know, it provides a foundation for some very, very, very solid research. 
So that brings me to the, uh, yeah, I've just said there, you need to use various sources to find answers about your careers or interests, uh, you know, from this uh, section. So folks, I'm very rapidly coming to the end of what I needed to cover. The last point on the CMAP report is what I get very excited about. I also enjoy doing it is that we also offer an individual one-on-one -on -one feedback session that you know, the purpose of feedback um, it promotes student understanding is a check that it's, you know, the report is a true reflection that generates commitment to doing further research. It's a separate activity to course and college choice. Yeah, you can base it on the, the CMAP results. It's a standardized approach to ensure consistent quality that follows international standards. And the people that actually sit down with you, or that by now, now we do it all virtually, um, you know, we have ensured that these people are extremely well trained you know, in the psychometric assessment and in giving feedback. Uh, I personally um, have constructed a lot of that, um, that training. So Rohini, I think we're coming to the end. Would you like to um, conduct poll three for us, please? Sure, Ron, thank you. We've got a whole bunch of questions and our panelists are trying to answer all of them. We will have a Q&A at the end. Uh, just the last poll for this evening is what according to you is the most important factor for making a career decision? Is it knowing yourself, seeking expert advice, discussing with parents, friends or teachers, the job market research or all of the above? 36 uh, and voted. Yeah, I'm sorry, carry on, uh, Rohini. Uh, no, uh, we're just waiting for a, a couple of more seconds, Ron. We've got about 60% that have voted. 21% uh, have said it's about, uh, they, as for them, the most important factor is knowing themselves. 4% uh, have said they will discuss it with uh, parents, peer group, and career advisors. 3% uh, are still looking for expert advice. 70% of them have said that they're looking, they will consider all of the above uh, while looking to make a career decision. So I'm just going to stop the poll. I'm just going to, I'm going to share the results as well. So about 22% said they're about knowing yourself. 70% uh, have said it's about, you know, every, every single aspect that we have mentioned in the poll. 5% are all about discussing with parents, peer group, and teachers. And 1% is based on job market research. Back to you, Ron. OK. Um, well, thank you very much for that. Um, that was a bit of a trick question. The correct answer to that, which I think 71% of people got, is all of the above. Um, yeah, those are all factors that we need to take into account when we are you're making those uh, those critical career decisions. So thank you for that. I'd now like to, yeah, I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, I think I'll hand back to Rohini now for questions and answers. Yeah, we have some wonderful panel members who are extremely knowledgeable. Um, so Rohini, over to you for the Q&A. Thank you, Ron. Uh, that was very, very insightful. Panelists, um, for those of you that are going to be answering the questions, can you please put on your screen so our, our audience can see you? Um, we've had a lot of questions that have come in today, and thank you for you know paying attention and asking these questions. Uh, Ron, I'll, I'll ask you the first one. One of the, you know, through your presentation, the one constant question, and I'm assuming this is from, um, you know, the the ninth and tenth graders that we have is how do we study at this point? How do we focus and how do we study? So if you could give us some insights on that and I'll ask the rest of the panel as well. Sorry, how do you focus and how do you study? Um, I'm seeing that almost as two questions. Um, 
yeah, how do you focus? If it's how do you focus on your future career? It's yeah, it's starting yeah to think about it. Um, yeah, do some research. Um, so yeah, that would be very useful. So if it's about how do you focus and how do you study? Um, you know, there are lots of very solid um, yeah learning principles, study principles that you can follow. And you know, these include. I know this sounds horribly boring. Um, but you know, it's actually putting together um, you know, a really good study schedule uh, that ensures you invest adequate time in study. And you know, most critically, that you also give yourself time to do other pleasurable things, fun things that give you the energy you know, to, uh, to invest in, the, you know, in study. What I'd also invite people to do, you know, if they're really concerned about that, unfortunately, I don't have the time to go into that in depth. But there are so many really good, you know, very short um, programs on focus and study skills you know, on, on websites like um, you know, Udemy, Coursera. Um, I mean, TC Global, we do a study skills program as well. So in summary, it's about you know, just getting yourself really well organized um, and you know, having a schedule, sticking to that schedule, while also ensuring that you have balance, you know, to do other fun things that life doesn't become, you know, just one, one massive conquest just to just to score good marks. There's more to life just than than the marks. We need to have a balanced lifestyle. So it's not a very comprehensive answer, Rini, but it's the best I have at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Binaman. Binaman, I, I, I think that. you're on mute. No, no. Yeah, please. You know what I do say is that year 12, when you reach the October, you know, with your exams going on in March, forget you have a life. Ron, I know, says enjoy some things, but those three months, forget you have a life, forget you have friends, forget you have a phone, just forget it. Unfortunately for you, feeling very, very sorry that year 12 is the most important exam of your study life. And you just have to do it. So that's the only focus. 10th, 11th, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Just don't forget how to study, but you can enjoy it. Thank you, Abhinav. Um, Ron, there were a lot of questions about some of the humanitarian subjects. I mean, you touched upon, you know, uh, the computer science and all of that. So one of the big ones that has come out is uh, from travel and hospitality. Um, Kalpana, if we can start with you. Uh, you know, what is the future of travel and hospitality and should we choose those as our subjects? That's That's been one of the main themes that have come across a lot of the questions today. Hi, Kalpana from yes. the International Relations team. Uh, so I think hospitality, tourism, these uh, careers will still remain. It, with COVID-19, the world is not going to end. We will still travel. People will still go for their holidays, maybe after a bit of, uh, you know, uh, the social distance, distancing will be there. I think we should definitely, definitely look at these careers. Yes, there would be changes, the way we travel, uh, the way currently Air India is saying we'll have uh, passengers, uh, the middle seat would be kept vacant, but they, they still will uh, fly. So I think people who are looking at this industry should go for uh, those studies because you are going to study for three more years. By that time, everything would have settled. So it's all good, guys. Go for it. Bindu, ma'am. Thank you. If you, would Thank you. Add. Anyone else like to add? No, no. I am, uh, you know, the number of questions we've got on chefs. All of you who want to become chefs, go for it, yeah? And don't worry about the subjects to study. Somebody wrote in to say, I love sciences. Even better, you'll be shocked when you go in to do hospitality. You have 20 odd subjects ranging from English and accounting to, you know, the actual culinary stuff. So just go for it. Services are not going to vanish. No computer can take over services. Please believe me. All right. The only people who should worry are the techies, not the services. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, speaking of, uh, speaking uh, of the, yeah, yes, if, sir. If, if I may just add something um, 
to that, um, I agree absolutely what uh, Carpenter and uh, Bindu have said. I think it's got a fantastic future. I'm from New Zealand and I'm, you know, I'm watching New Zealand now. And you know, the, the biggest thing is to get the tourism going again. Um, just understand if you're going to that industry, there, there will undoubtedly be great opportunities. You've also got to work incredibly hard. Uh, there's long shifts. There's unsociable hours quite often that are associated with it. Um, but yeah, yeah, also a great lifestyle in many ways. Thank you. True. True. Please, ma'am, if I can ask you the next one, there are a lot of questions is, uh, questions around engineering and uh, what subjects in engineering one should pursue at this point, whether they should do mechanical, computer science, robotics. Uh, what insight would you like to give, give us uh, students today? Okay, hi, uh, this is Krishna from the IT, uh, from the international relations team at TC Global. So yes, uh, to answer your question about engineering, there are various fields in engineering. In any case, if you go for engineering, the first or the first two years are generally very broad based. Okay, so there is scope of, you know, actually studying the foundation and then changing your program. Having said that, you could, you know, um, like Ron pointed out, you know, you could take the site uh, test and, you know, do the, do your mapping. If you are really interested in becoming a mechanical engineer, then maybe you go for mechanical. I mean, there there's scope for all the engineering programs, whether it's mechanical or electrical or IT, um, computer science, robotics, you know, actually they, they are all, if you see blended, you know, at the end of the day. If you are a mechanical engineer and later you want to be um, going into an IT company, then you can always get into the hardware part of the IT. If you want to be a software engineer, you could do that even if you've done electronics or electrical as a background. So um, it is entirely up to you and your interest what you find interesting and there's scope for all the engineering programs whether it's chemical whether it's civil there's scope for all i hope it answers your question sorry rohini um and this is the last comment i'm going to make um yeah folks a lot of People when they're in year 12, maybe first year, you are know, saying, well, you know, what, you know, what branch of engineering should I do? You know, I think what Krishna's saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, from a career's perspective, so long as you're heading in the right general direction, you know, right now you don't know what you don't know. And you know, he has a he has a he has a, a fact of life. The jobs that you know, a year 10 year 11 student will end up doing probably have not yet even been created. We don't even know what those jobs are going to be. Yeah, there's so many new, exciting, different sort of roles, jobs that are coming up. So yeah, so long as you're heading in the right general direction, yeah, it's absolutely fine. And yeah, the statement I make quite often is we don't know what we don't know. And yeah, as you get into your undergrad, Years, so long as you are in the right sort of general direction, you know, you will get a heck of a lot more insight and things will be changing so fast that you know you will have the flexibility you know to make fantastic career decisions. You don't have to decide exactly what the job should be now. That would be counterproductive. Sorry, I'm talking too much, I won't answer anymore. <laughs> thanks, no, uh, thanks, Ron. Thanks for okay. the Rodney, just let me add here yeah, engineering by itself is a great base degree to have. So what we do with engineering, I mean, I know a lot of you want us to put, uh, not make it so general and say from mechanical, what else can I do? Well, you can go into manufacturing, which is now going to start, you know, going to become a very important part of it. But the reason why we're trying to keep it a bit general uh, is not because we don't want to tell you, but as Ron said, 
by the time you guys finish, we're talking about three, four years down the line, you know, whatever we say could be quite outdated. So yes, engineering is a super great uh, uh, place to be as, as a base degree. Change your mind after that. You can go and do financial technology, uh, financial, um, uh, you know, fintech, uh, financial tech te technology, because engineering will have enough uh, math subjects in it. So that's the reason for being a little more general. Thank you, Vinam. Uh, Romila, I'm going to ask you the next one. There are a, a lots of students who say that I've got very, very varied interests and I like everything and I like nothing at the same time. So how will CMAP really help me, um, you know, make a career decision uh, because my, my choices are so varied? I mean, Rajesh, if you'd like to ch chime in as well. Romila, you're on uh, mute. Oh, it's fine. I think I'll take that. Um, okay. 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 So, can you Romila hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, we can hear you, Romila. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roini. Uh, so, I'm Romila from the LD team. So, actually, that's a very happy problem to have if you have a lot of diverse interests, which means that you can actually do a whole bunch of things. And uh, one of the ways CMAP Plus will really help you is that it will give you scientific assessment of uh, who you really are what's your personality like what do you need at a workplace what will really truly make you happy what are your career needs what career themes really resonate with once you get all that information and also you get, uh, an idea about your reasoning abilities and your numerical ability you would be able to look at the CMAP Plus report and also get some vocational suggestions, which will, which will indicate to you to a very large extent as to what is a career choice that you should look at that resonates with who you really are. So I think in that sense, especially people with diverse interests, it makes a lot of sense to do a CMAP Plus to know themselves very truly. Rajesh, you want to add something? yeah so other than that i mean the most important thing to know is that uh, what is it that you truly enjoy and are passionate about and what is it that you're most likely to you know pursue as a career and be successful at um, a lot of times we get students who are very good at certain subjects but they do not necessarily enjoy it so it's it's that's why it becomes really crucial to find out where where your personality your interests and even uh, for that matter your skills align um, so that you're able to find uh, those broad career areas that are best suited for you. So that's where I think uh, CMAP does a fantastic job to help you with that. Thank you. Um, uh, Krishna ma'am, Bidh ma'am, uh, I mean, this one is, I know, uh, your area of expertise, but a lot of questions about whether I should do, uh, whether I should do medicine, and what kind of, you know, if I don't want to become a doctor, what kind of, what kind of career should I be looking at? I'm doing sciences and I can I do it with math. So let's start with question number one, which is should science, should I, be, should I try to become a doctor and how do I go about it? I know a number of uh, people have asked about medicine and said, how do yes. I go? How do you go about it? You get fantastic marks You sit for NEET. Make sure that you, uh, in India, you don't always need math. So you're safe there. Uh, you just need the sciences. Do your NEET sit for counseling, get into a medical school and become a doctor. I mean, that is the roadmap. On the way, you're going to be working 18 hour days. Uh, you're going to have a very, very, very difficult non life for the next six years. Um, I mean, that's the easiest way to become a doctor. But uh, no, jokes apart, medicine is not the easiest. Sometimes, sometimes a C map actually tells you uh, whether you will be able to sustain becoming a doctor. You know, Ron showed you all the nine areas. What do we look for? We look for high nurturing. We look for high scientific to see whether you have the ability to become a doctor. It doesn't mean this is foolproof. Maybe you have the passion, but that is medicine. Lots and lots and lots of students have asked uh, about uh, medicine. And if you want to go abroad to study, then for medicine, chemistry is a must. Most people think it's biology, but everywhere abroad, you need two sciences and one of them needs to be chemistry. So, you know, take that as a, as a given. And if you need more help, just connect with us. 
I mean, we have offices all over the country. We're 25 offices everywhere. And otherwise, connect with us on tcglobal.com, put in a query, and somebody will uh, pick it up and answer it specifically for you. Uh, Krishna, would you like to add? Uh, yes, to I, would, I also got uh, a few questions that, you know, we don't want to do our MBBS, but we want to be, you know, related to uh, being doctors. So you could, if you don't want to be a medical doctor, then you could do nursing, you could uh, do dentistry, uh, you could, uh, you know, do any other health sciences related to nutrition. Yeah. You could be a physiotherapist. You could study pharmacy. So these are all related subjects. And uh, you could go for mm. any of these. Now, coming back to being a doctor, if you're thinking of going abroad, it's a very, very long process because, you know, most countries you don't get into mbbs which is called md there you don't get into md directly normally you will have to do your four years of degree then appear for an entrance exam and then do another four to five years of medicine and then to become a practicing doctor you need to do your internship which is called residency for another three to seven years. So it's a long, long route. But if you really want to be a doctor, then you have to follow this route. OK, thank you. Let's Sorry, now, you're you're now. I have. Sorry, you're I know I'm cautious my... of time, but we have just. Sorry, I'm going to break my last promise. <laughs> yeah, the whole area of health management now is going to have huge, huge, huge opportunities. Um, so yeah, you know, that requires more you know, leadership managerial skills than the medical skills, but health management is a massive area for the future as well. Yes, of course. Mm. Thank you. Um, the second last question. You know, before we move from medicine, one area which Bindumam and uh, Krishnamam did not touch upon was veterinary sciences. You want to be a doctor? There are mm. n number of positions available. Please look at that option as well. Correct. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Kat. Now, just uh, two more questions to go. I'm cautious that everyone is, uh, you know, we've we've gone slightly above time, but you've asked so many questions, and we want to be able to give you all the answers that we can during the session. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of questions about psychology and the future of uh, the kind of careers they can do in, in psychology, clinical and non-clinical courses. So, um, I mean, who would like to who would like to take that question? Should I start? All right. Psychology, depending yeah, on sure. what you want to do, most people think uh, most people think psychology is only clinical psychology. Please, clinical psychology is only one part of psychology, and that is the toughest one. You need to have an honors degree to be able to do it before you can become a psychologist anywhere in the world. But but if you want to do it away from clinical stuff, there's lots. There's retail, uh, which is consumer psychology. There is in, in the criminal justice system, there's forensic psychology. Uh, you have management psychology. You have industrial psychology. You have educational psychology. You have special needs uh, for kids. So yes, psychology, as a, again, as a base degree, Super. And you don't need, uh, you You must have maths at least in the 10th standard. But uh, if you have it in the 12th, it'll be very, very good. Because, you know, there is a little bit of statistics in it. Um, you don't have to be a science student. You can be a humanities student. That doesn't matter at all to start studying psychology. In India, unfortunately, we don't have too many honors degrees. Uh, so, again, connect with us. And we will go on, on the right track and give you plenty of choices. Yeah. Would anyone else like to add? Tony, I think we has nailed it. Oh. The next Sorry? question, Tony.
Ruini? I don't know where Ruini? I can hear. I don't know where she is. Okay. The, the last question. Uh, kind of technical. Can you hear me? Yes. yes now we can. you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. We okay. can hear you. The last. Sorry. The last. The last question uh, for this afternoon. Um, and for this, I'll hand it over back to Ron. Is how do we get in touch uh, with uh, with you for the CMAP Plus, as well as if we want to talk in detail about our, our planning our careers. So Ron, I'll leave that to you because I know it's coming in the next slides as well. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're in a very fortunate position where we have trained a team um, of. Uh, specialist people with NTC Global, um, you know, that can uh, administer the the CMAP um, assessment. So, if you'd like to do it, it's as easy as um, you know, getting onto the website uh, or you know, just contacting um, you know, TC Global. Yeah, I think I've got the the numbers here. Um, Facebook, uh, have we got? Oh, sorry, I've lost that. Um, but yeah, look, just contact TC Global. We have a whole team of people um, you know, that looks after CMAP. And you know, they will be able to do just about everything that I can do with you. Uh, so yeah, please do that. And yeah, in terms of your career planning, again, we have invested hugely in the development of our TC Global Relationship Managers, you know, that they can guide you through this uh, process extremely well also. So it's as easy as getting in touch with, uh, you know, with TC Global and um, you know, one of our relationship managers or very competent professional people will be able to, uh, to help and assist you. Uh, Ron, if you can move on to the next slide, then we can uh, also share with them our handles. Yep, that's the one we're looking for. There you uh, go. Sorry. Guys, uh, this is how you can get in touch with us. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, you can connect with us at TC Global Official on any of these. Uh, you can also write, we know a lot of you have questions that are very individual and specific to you. You can write into us at webinar at the rate tcglobal.com. We will be sending you an email thanking you for joining us today. So all you need to do is write back to us on that. And if you if you want to reach out, you you know how to do it. So for those of you that are studying, uh, you know, study hard. Best of luck. Um, and for those of you that have already started career planning, reach out to us and let's see how we can help. So during this period, guys, as we say at TC Global, stay safe and speak soon. Good evening. So thank, thank you, everybody. Um, good luck, God bless. As Rainy says, yeah, stay safe and hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Bye-bye.